Greetings! I'm back with a new Animal Artists Collective video. The theme for this installment was the poles, so I chose to paint arctic foxes. There was something really compelling about painting a small ball of predatory white fluff. <laughs> this animal's conservation status is assessed as not threatened, but that situation varies a lot depending on the fox populations. To quote Wikipedia, the world population of arctic foxes is not endangered, but two arctic fox subpopulations are. One is on Medny Island, in the Commander Island, Russia, which was reduced by some 85-90% to 90 to around 90 animals as a result of manj caused by an ear tick introduced by dogs in the 1970s. The population is currently under treatment with antiparasitic drugs, but the result is still uncertain. The other threatened population is the one in Fennoscandia, which is Norway, Sweden, Finland, and the Kola Peninsula. This population decreased drastically around the start of the 20th century as a result of extreme fur prices, which caused severe hunting also during population lows. The population has remained as a low density for more than 90 years, with additional reductions during the last decade. The Fennoscandian population numbers around 140 breeding adults. Even after local lemming peaks, the arctic fox population tends to collapse back to levels dangerously close to non-viability. I wanted to quote this section of Wikipedia because I wanted to be really specific about how some arctic foxes are actually threatened, but most of them are fine. For this painting, I wanted to film things a bit differently. Instead of the sped up footage of the whole thing, I filmed a few moments of me painting and will try to keep them at a close to actual speed. I also wanted to approach this painting in a slightly different way, something closer to what I regularly do. I find that when I'm doing special paintings, in a specific context, I tend to switch the way I do things and move further away from my style. <laughs> it's like I'm scared that I'll mess up, or that my regular style is not enough. Needless to say, this is not a super healthy way to work, and I'm trying to correct it. I was reading more about the fox, and I really wanted to share this passage with you. Again, I'm quoting from Wikipedia. Arctic foxes must endure a temperature difference of up to 90 to 100 degrees Celsius between the external environment and their internal core temperature. To prevent heat loss, the arctic fox curls up tightly, tucking its legs and head under its body and behind its furry tail. This position gives the fox the smallest surface area to volume ratio and protects the least insulated areas. Arctic foxes also stay warm by getting out of the wind and residing in their dens. Although the arctic fox is active year-round and do not hibernate, they attempt to preserve fat by reducing their locomotor activity. They build up their fat reserves in the autumn, sometimes increasing their body weight by more than 50%. This provides greater insulation during the winter and the source of energy when food is scarce. The fox has a low surface area to volume ratio, as evidenced by its generally compact body shape, short muzzle and legs, and short, thick ears. Since less of its surface area is exposed to the arctic cold, less heat escapes from its body. What I really loved of this paragraph was how much it reminded me of my cats. <laughs> they sure don't need to endure harsh temperatures, but they still really enjoy warmth, and I often find them curled up in super tight donuts. Peko, especially, curls up in a way almost identical to the fox's. 
Since this position is characteristic of the fox, I wanted to feature it in my painting. I chose to also include the second fox, as I read that they are usually monogamous, and that both parents help take care of their youngs. I loved reading about the body characteristics, like the short, thick ears, short muzzle and legs, etc. It's hard to remember all of this stuff, but it's also super practical if one wants to draw an arctic fox and make it recognizable. Even if I was to draw the fox in a more cartoony way, as long as I can incorporate or translate most of these features, it should be easy to recognize and identify. There is a last passage that I wanted to quote. The arctic fox lives in some of the most frigid extremes on the planet, but they do not start to shiver until the temperature drops to minus 70 Celsius. Among its adaptations for survival in the cold is its dense, multi-layered pelage, which provides excellent insulation. Additionally, the arctic fox is the only canid whose food pads are covered in fur. The fur of the arctic fox provides the best insulation of any mammal. There are two genetically distinct coat color morphs, white and blue. In the winter, the white morph is white in color and turns brown along the back with light gray around the abdomen in summer. The blue morph is often a dark blue, brown or gray color year round. The color of the fox's coat also determines where they are most likely to be found. The white morph mainly lives inland and blends in with the snowy tundra, while the blue morph occupies the coast because its dark color blends in with the cliffs and rocks. To me, the fact that animals will have fur coats that change with the seasons to help boost their chains of survival is already pretty amazing. I didn't know that the arctic fox also came in two colors, if I can say that. It's fascinating to see how they adapted and evolved to match their environments. If this is the first Animal Artists Collective video that you're watching, here's a bit more about it. The Animal Artists Collective was founded to provide a platform for emerging artists to promote positive messages for animal welfare and conservation, and to connect artists to their communities. Every two months, a specific theme is chosen and the members of the collective have to choose an animal that fits in this theme, and then produce art featuring this animal. The original artworks are also offered for sale, with at least 50% of the proceeds going to a non-profit animal conservation organization. We also share information, art process and thoughts through a series of videos, all released on the same day. In the description below, you'll find links to all the artists member of the collective at the moment of posting this video. Make sure to go check out their work. You'll also find a link to my painting that's available for sale. Thank you very much for watching, take care, bye bye.